Dr. Shekhar Chaudhary, uh, other distinguished members of the panel, ladies and gentlemen. Over the last one day, we have had several discussions about what Blee School should be doing to face a challenge of the next century, or maybe the coming years, and whether we are doing enough for meeting the cause of <coughs> building leaders effectively. And as a theme here, we are also saying about effective MBA faculty for the 21st century. My opinion is a very loosely defined sort of um, term because faculty alone, faculty-driven institutes, by that alone, an institute cannot grow. First of all, what exactly do we mean by empowering faculty? A typical faculty would join an institute, let's say, at the age of 30, and would be there at till 60 or 65. So over this 30 or 35 years, a lot of changes do take place. And does the faculty allow himself or herself to change in keeping with the times? So that's something that the institute itself or the management cannot help. It is for the faculty to himself or herself introspect and try to change. Because in my opinion, the greatest challenge in all our discussions has been our adaptability to change, be it technology, for example, when business analytics has become a very relevant topic these days, or web-based learning has become very important, it is imperative that all faculty should sharpen their pencils and be ready for that. Yesterday in the beginning, right in the beginning of the conclave, Amit was mentioning about the four attributes of faculty, or four types of faculty, people who are teachers, researchers, consultants, and trainers. And actually, implied in that was also the need for them to be integrated so that we have effective uh, faculty for the next generation. But in my opinion, that is not required. Faculty can be specialized or can be good in their own areas, and it is up to the stakeholder to actually do the integration. I go by what uh, Mr. Vinit Nair was mentioning in his uh, address yesterday, in which he mentioned about some three, four types of teachers in his life. And they were all specialized in their own areas only. They were not integrated. But it was up to Vinit Nair to integrate them. So in the sense that the students would integrate all that if they are going through a process by which you have excellent teachers, excellent researchers. They also go through and interact with excellent people who have corporate connections and corporate consultancy experience, students will imbibe that automatically. So in my opinion, all that the B schools need to do is to create an environment for, environment for making faculty ready for change. So that is where the B schools or the management have a role to play. Decisions, faculty-driven uh, B schools would also mean that faculty are involved in day-to-day -day decisions. That cannot be, it's not practical in the sense that in a, in a company, for example, all the employee, it cannot be an employee-driven company. Employees will have their say, their suggestions will be taken into account, but that beyond that, it has somebody has to take a call, somebody has to have a vision, somebody has to have a direction, strategy, et cetera. So what the B school, in my opinion, would need to do is to create an environment in which pedagogical changes are affected. What happens internationally in other B schools have to be studied, and if many schools are actually, or the world is actually using more spreadsheets, more web-based learning, more case methods, more project-based learning, more role play, then all that has to be imbibed. Concurrently, as has been discussed in several uh, panels yesterday, the social responsibility angle also has to be introduced somewhere so that it is also enabled. So in a way, we are going to have a mixture of social responsibility, entrepreneurship, all the technology that is required for effective learning and enabling the faculty to blossom. By the very process of blossoming, in my opinion, uh, uh, the effective faculty creation would happen and that will actually help the stakeholders much more than anything else. Also, as a prelude to this particular discussion, yes, a prelude to this particular discussion, there were something about uh, IAMs and how non-IAM schools should actually try to or what they should be doing to make them as leader-driven as the IAMs. In my opinion, the circumstances are totally different. 
IAMs do not have to, basically IAMs do not have to bother about admissions and placement. That happens to be one of the crucial things for a non-IAM. So in my opinion, the circumstances, there's not a level playing ground, it's a different thing, but that doesn't make the non-IAM any the weaker. Because the non-IAM can still work on its strength and kill work on the faculty strength, the faculty empowerment, and also do all the necessary things to make sure that overall learning is effective. Thank you.